Awesome, thank you. Okay. Give it up for me. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, this is the title. Uh, Justin Larson, you can follow me, ironic nickname. Uh, that's because my nickname is Slim. I'm not quite slim anymore. Um, do web app security for Workfront, formerly at task, if you don't know who Workfront is. Um, and I'm not good at slides, so I just threw in some memes, so you can at least have some, some fun. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about Lair, which is a, a pen testing collaboration framework tool. Um, it was developed by Dan Kotman and Tom Steele. Uh, they both work for Fishnet Security. Um, and it's a great way to collaborate with your team as you do pen tests. So, um, so there's a few problems. Um, does anybody do pen testing here on their own, maybe on their own stuff, or maybe they're not a pen tester, because I'm not a pen tester by trade, but we do pen testing. Um, and so there's always lots of output from hundreds of tools that you can use to scan or do anything, and you times that by the number of testers um, in the engagement, and then, so we have duplicated work, data gets lost, and it's very unorganized. Just some classic problems with pen testing um, that we, as a team, run into as well. Uh, so, actually Chris just walked in. He's the one that found Lair and showed us how to use it. He works at Workfront, my boss. So, <laughs> um, but Lair, it, it runs with Meteor and Node.js, um, so, I wanted to abandon even writing this presentation once I found out about Meteor because it's a, it's a pretty awesome framework. Uh, so you can do, it's JS, it's JavaScript on the server and the client. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. Pretty, you get all the, the buzzwords down at the bottom. Uh, slick, clean, simple. Um, but it does, so it like, it'll listen to the MongoDB to see if there's any changes and it'll just update the page automatically without having to be refreshed. Um, it's really quick. Um, and the dinosaur is very important that it saved us. So um, from the asteroids, if what asteroids are in space, the meteors, dinosaurs are dumb. So these are, these are the commands that you can do when installing meteor, or not meteor, um, uh, layer. So we'll go through those in a sec, though. Um, and if you don't follow InfoSec Taylor Swift on Twitter, you should. It is a good laugh, just so you know. And we'll go to the demo. That's the end of my slides, so um, if you like demos, then buckle up. Is that big enough? Can everyone see that? Okay, so it's pretty simple to start. You enable the start script. You give it the IP that you want. Um, I'm just going to do localhost here, and it starts up. So I've done this a few times on this machine, and the very first time you do it, it's going to set up a, a self-signed cert. Um, I'm not going to go through that this time because I've already got it set up, but it does that in the first time you set it up. So, um, so we don't have any MongoDB user set up, so we'll say yes. Wait, no, we wanted to say no. Oh, now we gotta stop. Should read what it's asking. We'll just set up a Mongo user called Mongo, the password. And then it asks to set up uh, a layer user. And we'll do that as well. And we're up and running. So uh, pretty hard to do that. So this is actually where layer is running.
So uh, there we go. And so first thing you gotta do is you got to create a user. And a password. And it's pretty pretty bare, obviously, because we haven't created anything. So we'll just create a simple B sides SLC project. And now we're actually in in layer. And so you can go in, so we have hosts services, vulnerabilities. Yep. Is that better? Okay. Is that all right size? Can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah, so you have a lot of different things you can put into to layer. Um, from what I've noticed, it's more of a network penetration testing rather than application. Um, I think maybe in the second version, uh, they'll probably do some more application specific because you can import stuff from, from Burp as well. And so, but it, to me, it's more of a network security pen test. Um, so we can get vulnerability services, notes, credentials, and contributors. So we'll, we'll create a contributor. Um, actually, we don't create them here. Uh, settings, so. If I had one complaint, it's because they don't let you specify your password twice, so if you put in something you don't think you put in, It'll become a nightmare. You just have to delete the account. Um, but so with contributors, we can just we add another person. Um, and I only show that really because down here in the bottom right, can you see that? You have messages. You have a little chat if you don't want to use like your internal chat or whatever. And it works sometimes. So if we logged in as that other user. I got it right, sweet. So there's my chat from earlier. Pretty simple. Okay, so we can go in and we can add hosts manually, which is always real fun. Add the IP, whatever, fake host name, Windows, and submit. So there we have our, our host, just one of them, but who wants to manually enter everything? That's a, that's a pain. So, um, Dan and Tom created what they call drones, which are written in Python because they didn't want to write them in JavaScript in case people didn't really know how to write JavaScript. Python's pretty simple. Um, but with a drone, what it does is it will parse through your data from your tools that you have and import it directly into Layer for you. Um, so, uh, They've written drones for see Nessus, Nexpose, Nmap, and then they have like a raw one if you want to pass some JSON to it. Um, and there's also I thought there was a burp suite one. Maybe I don't see it there. But and you can install those to path just using pip, which is what I do. Uh, it makes it easier, but or you can just run it as a script as well. Uh, but let's get into that. That's the fun part. So this is our Mongo data database, how we get to it. 
Um, so we have to export environment variable. I spelled it right, hopefully. So I did a really basic uh, nmap scan. And to use the drones, you just drone-nmap, uh, if you have them installed, to path. And then what you need from layer is the project ID, so it knows which project it's going to. And it gives you that right at the top there. Pretty convenient. You just paste that. And then you need the path to the file. And so it connects and then tells you it's successful, the project, and then so it processed seven hosts. And if we go back, there they are. Um, pretty quick. Uh, so you can go in and you change the colors, whatever you want. Uh, the colors don't mean anything unless you specify within your organization what you want them to. Um, but we can get to that. We'll get to that later on how you can automate that. So right now, we did a very basic nmap scan. So we don't have any ports or anything like that. It was just a, to find the host. Um, and you can go into this log, and it'll show you all the commands that you ran. So this was what our nmap scan was. And then this is what the drone imported. And it'll tell you every event that occurs. So now if we go to her services, we don't have anything in there yet. It's actually is that cutting off. That's okay. That's actually OK. So if we run another, import another NMAP scan that I did, we can watch the, the data as it goes in. So at the bottom, there it is. And then at the top, it fills up. So uh, and there's no need to refresh or anything like that. It's just quick and snappy. Um, and then you can search on port or whatever you want to, and then it'll show you all those. And then What's pretty cool is over here, this is just a text area that shows up just the host IP. So if you need to import this into another tool, you can, uh, is, which is what uh, I did. So I used uh, a brute forcing tool called Medusa. I think it's pretty similar to Hydra. There's a little fork. It's, I found it first before I found Hydra, so I, I used it. So, But I think it will also work. Uh, but the drone that I wrote will work for Hydra as well. So we call Medusa. Make sure that we have this in our clipboard. And we want to actually go to credential. So this is where Medusa will send its input. See, and so there we have the four IPs that we put in the Medusa. Somehow we were able to brute force all of them. <laughs> Not really. That's fake data. But um, that's how you how we we could import it. Um, so I wanted to explain a little bit about how that works. So this is actually the drone, the, get, the script that gets called. And it imports this Medusa module, which is another Python script that's actually doing the parsing. But it's going through and it, it's, so it, the project, it requires argument one is that project ID, and then the argument two is the file. And it sends it to medusa.parse, uh, which is this, which I need to work on still. but basically just looks for success in a line and then it parses that line with the data that it wants and 
it returns a dictionary, uh, Python dictionary. And then all those, so in the back end, it's all j JSON, isn't what the MongoDB is. So uh, converting those to JSON or dictionaries to JSON is really easy. And so that's where it imports into the layer database. I wanted to show something else, but I forgot. So this, this was the, the Medusa file. So four lines that were just parsed and then put in. So oh, oh, the drone mod module. So these are all the, uh, it's the data model, model that you have to import the data, all the data that you have access to through the drones. So this is what logs your tool, what you use the command, OS, I mean, credentials, pretty self-explanatory. Um, but they're just dictionaries with lists for Python. So pretty simple if you have ever done Python before. And I'm not an expert. I've only been writing stuff in Python for about a year. And it's pretty easy. So the main... Make it so easy so that you can, if you have custom tools that you guys are using internally, you can easily write something to import your data into Lair. That's, that's the whole point. Um, but see, we, let's go to the next part. So we have the Lair drones also come with uh, Nessus and Nexpose. So we'll look at some of those vulnerabilities that it, it found. So right now we don't have any, obviously. So so it imports all those, and it tells you who it was last modified by, which is nice, so that you can tell if it was a user or a tool and who's working on what. It'll tell you over here on the right side. Um, then also, let's just do the next both one. So imports all the stuff from Expos. Um, does anybody think this would be useful? <laughs> I don't know. We find it very useful. It helps when we're all working together to to uh, stay on task and not duplicate the work that everyone else is doing. Uh, if we go look at the logs, it still shows us all the the commands for each um, tool that we used. Um, even though Expos scanned pretty generic. And Nessus shows us the Medusa command that we ran and the other NMAP scan, um, and then everything else. So it's very auditable if you want to see who's done what and where. Um, so there's another tool that I wrote another drone for um, called the Harvester. Has anyone heard of the Harvester before? Great. A uh, pretty cool little recon tool to look at a, a domain and see um, who works there, how they have their email addresses and whatnot. Um, but it just does searches on on Google and LinkedIn and a few other things. So you can just look at it. So so Google people, PNG, PGP, Google profiles. I think it's Google Plus now, Bing, Jigsaw, Jigsaw, LinkedIn, and all. So we can just run a quick one. I just did it on B-Sides, slc.org. I hope Sean doesn't care. The good thing about it is it never, never touches anything that you're looking up, so just using Google and other sources to find that data. So this might be kind of slow. So I, what I did is I give it the domain, 
and then the amount of results you want from each service, so 10, and then what service you want, I just did all, and then it exports it to XML. So now it'll give us emails found, didn't find any people, um, host information. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Um, so I wrote a drone just to process that information and put it into layer. Um, So there really isn't anything for like recon like that, for like a phishing attack or anything like that. So I I could put these into like notes, but I chose to put them into credentials, even though they're not credentials. They're just could be usernames or whatever. Um, so we'll run it, and it should populate with a few more usernames. There we go. So it's got Sean, got Jackson at B sides, admin, some really weird email address, and then just the B sides.org. Um, so now that we've got all of our data in there, it's time to go through it and see what's relevant to us. And so you can actually, with Lair, you can run client side scripts. Uh, just from the console log, and and see or, and manipulate the data. So we'll do that real quick. Hope you guys don't mind getting out early. So, <laughs> but so these are really easy to write. So these are just a couple. So. I call this function orange. It'll go in and change everything orange that has any type of credential, like any type of like either username or password. Doesn't matter. Um, blue. Let's see, blue. If the if the OS hasn't been determined yet on a host, red will change it to. No, that's the wrong one. Red. If the vulnerability is above, an, if, they have, if a host has a vulnerability above an eight, then it'll turn everything red. And then green will change. You'll be able to select all the vulnerabilities by a certain name, giving it some regex. Um, so you just you just copy these. And just paste them right in. And they worked. Awesome. So we'll just run orange. I did it wrong. Okay, so you saw it blink and then it didn't change. So we have to first go in and change the settings to allow client side updates. Obviously, because it's, you can run your own scripts on a client, that's bad for any kind of other web application. Uh, but since you're doing your testing, it's okay. So we'll go back into it. Push the up arrow. We'll run again. So there we go. Now we have all the hosts that have a credential, either a username or a password. And so we could just focus on those ones for now. Or we can run script blue. So now we know all the ones that we probably aren't going to worry about or probably just need more uh, recon to find out what the, the OS is for each of those, and then do red. So red will change the host, and also in the vulnerabilities tab, it'll change the ones that are above eight to, uh, to red, so. So those two, something wicked and EBE, both have vulnerabilities that are above an eight, which could be exploitable within the pen test. 
Uh, and then it marks them both red, and it's Flash Player for Mac hasn't been updated. That's, that never works for anybody, right? Um, and then the last one we can do is green, and we just give it some regex. Let's see. If And I typed it wrong. There we go. So now everything as vulnerable has a vulnerability for Apache is highlighted. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, you can do that with any any other thing that you want if you want to highlight SSH or or whatnot. So. Um, let's see where. Okay, so that's pretty much what layer can do. Uh, so now, if you go to the front page, all your colors that you've changed them to show up in these little little donuts. Um, I don't know why services services don't have colors, so they're always gray. Uh, but another cool thing, if you're a pen tester and you're working for some client, you can export all the data that you found. You can either export it to some server or you can just download it and then send it to them somehow. But it's just a, a JSON file of, of everything that you found. And they could just, if they wanted to throw up a layer and then import it and look at it. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so it's open source. It's on... GitHub, let's see which one. So yeah, here, layer dash framework dash slash layer. Um, so they, Tom still tweeted a while back that they're working on version two. Um, so hopefully it can come with some more advanced stuff, but I think it's pretty simple and pretty effective in what it is right now. And I don't know if I have, so this Harvester is all the tools that I use for open source and you can go find and add to them. Layer drones are there as well. Uh, if you, there's a whole bunch of browser scripts that you can run that are already written as well that can do certain things. Um, like the ones that I ran to change the colors. Uh, you can specify to count every object or whatever you want it to do. So, uh, sky's the limit really. So, um, that's pretty much it. I don't know if anybody having questions or concerns. Yeah, I thought I thought there was. Maybe I it didn't look like there was. Uh, I don't see a burp there. Like in, so like if you get a vulnerability in the vulnerabilities tab to find those or? Yeah. Um, so I haven't, I've spent most of my time in the layer drones part. I haven't done much of the development in the layer part, but I actually wanted to because I've, if you look at Meteor, Meteor is awesome, and I really want to get in and learn and dig deep into Meteor. So, um, but I imagine it's as simple as just adding something in a tab and then creating a collection in the database for, for something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure it'd be, if you have a developer on staff that could, you just work it and add it yourself or, or whatever. But, yeah. It does spin sometimes. Yeah, so most of the pen tests we've used on this has been network pen testing as well. Uh, not, no. So, 
Um, but I'm going you know, to look into doing that. So we have another pen test coming up. So, yeah. John's the only one who's got a question. If not, that's it then. <laughs>